The diameter of a copper wire is thought to be approximately 0.3 millimeters. Which instrument should be used to obtain the more accurate measurement of the diameter of the wire? So when you're using a, a measuring tape, is essentially an inch tape, right? So if you're trying to measure the diameter of a wire, which is roughly 0.3 millimeters, like very thin wire, uh, pretty sharp as well, uh, you're gonna have a very difficult time with all of these except for a micrometer, right? And the obvious answer without doing any calculation or any understanding is C, because we know this in fact is designed to uh, measure things which are very small. So its accuracy is up to 0.00th of a millimeter, right? So that's one hundredth of a millimeter. And that's how accurate a micrometer screw gauge is. Very straightforward question. The diagram shows an enlarged drawing of the end of a meter rule. It's being used to measure the length of a small feather. The small feather is one end is at 10 centimeter, right? The other end is at, it's kind of difficult to see. I think that's a, that's going to be 2.9 centimeter. That's at 2.9 centimeter. Or actually, because I wrote 10 millimeter over there. Sorry, I meant millimeter. So let's keep it consistent and keep it millimeter here as well. So that's gonna be 29 millimeter. The length of the wire obviously becomes the difference of these two values. That's straightforward. I should be getting one or like 19 millimeter, right? And we have that answer directly. The answer is A. A diagram shows the height of stacked of identical coins. They're completely identical. And if you count them, they're 12 coins, right? Each, let's say, has a width of W. So 12 W is equal to 2.4 centimeter. Indeed. So W or width of one coin should be 2.4 divided by 12, which will come out to be, I think, 0 0.2 uh, centimeter. Now if I try to look for the answer, 0 0.2 is showing up, but millimeters. That's incorrect, and that's gone. That's not right. Uh, two millimeters? Uh, I don't know. Zero, it can be 2.4, right? Two centimeters, that's way off, right? The entire thing is 2.4 centimeter. How could one coin be two centimeters? Two centimeters would be somewhere this, at this length, right? This height. So, convert this into millimeters, what do we get? That'll just be two, millimeters because one centimeter ha is equal to a uh, well not a uh, 10 millimeter that's the difference so i just multiplied this by 10 i get two millimeters and yeah, so b looks like a very good answer to me right now all right what is the most accurate and precise method to measure the thickness of a coin use a micrometer screw gauge yes we just talked about this it is indeed A. But let's try to continue. Use a ruler and look at the scale perpendicularly. You can do that, but you can only guesstimate the best value because a ruler is just not accurate enough. Coins are just tiny little things. Top balance will help you measure mass. Use the displacement method with water to measure the cylinder in the measuring cylinder. Well, that'll give you the volume of the coin, not its thickness. So our correct answer is A. A student measures the volume of a cork. He's in, he's, I want to say bad, a bad word for him, but he's not the smartest person. So, but he puts some water and this water level is at 50 centimeter cube, right? Then what he does is he adds one glass ball. Glass ball rises from 50 to 60. So it's at 60 now. So this glass ball is actually 10 centimeter in volume because adding this into the measuring cylinder increases the volume by 10. 60 minus 50 is 10, right? He puts the cork and then a second identical glass ball into the water shown. So he puts another cork and another glass 
uh, ball into it, right? So he starts with 50 centimeter cube on the left hand side. He adds two glass balls, which are each of 10 centimeter each. And then he adds a cork of which volume I do not know. All of that should sum up to 100 centimeter cube of height of or volume, right? Solving this, this is going to be uh, 50 plus 20, that's 70 plus x is equal to 100. x comes out to be 30 centimeter cube. The quark is 30 centimeter cube. The answer isn't here, but yeah, 30 is the answer. A student investigates the rate of flow of oil through a funnel. The diagrams show the experiment and the volume of the oil in the measuring cylinder at the start of the experiment and one minute later. So you start off, if you take a closer look, at somewhere close to 20, but it's not 21, even though it's, gra you know, uh, it's moving by one, uh, what do you call this, one graduation? Let's go over that. It's going up by one graduation, but it's not 21. It's actually 22. Hasso, you may ask, because this value is actually 30. So over here, this entire area, or these all of these five graduations are dividing um, the next 10 values between here. So they're 10 centimeter cubes divided evenly between five. So each graduation is two, I think we're talking about centimeter, right? Uh, two centimeter, all right? So it's two centimeter. So this on the, over here is 22 centimeter. And over here, same logic, I think that's the exact 70, right? So we want to measure the rate of something. So it's the change of volume, because we're talking about volume, but rate could be about anything, kind of like speed. Rate is essentially speed of something, right? Divided by the time it's taking. So we want the difference, so that's 70 minus 22. Divide that by the time, we want that in seconds. It took one minute to do this, so I'm putting in one min minute's equivalent in seconds. 60. Your rate comes out to be 0 0.8 centimeter cube per second. So this question, because of lack of room is incomplete, we want to figure out the volume of the plastic. Over here, this should be very easy. You start off with 55 centimeter cube because this is 55 and you add the metal box it goes up to 70 actually you don't even need 55 at this point right you don't need that um, it goes up to 70 so you know this is 15 centimeter cube and when you add this to 70 uh, yeah, you can just tell quickly that this is just has to be 10 centimeter cube. So the plastic, the white one is 10 centimeter cube. The black one is 15 centimeter cube. That's kind of cute. All right. All right. A length of a cotton is measured between two points of a ruler. So it starts over here. If I can see this, this is starting at 2.4 centimeter. This is 2.4 centimeter. And over here, it ends at 15.6. So the length of the wire is 15.6 minus 2.4. That's 13.2 centimeter. This wire is wound, wound closely around a pen. It goes around exactly six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? What is the distance once around the pen? So what is the circumference of the fan, pen? This length is six times the circumference of the pen, right? This length. So what's one sixth of this? I take this value and I divide it by six. My value comes out to be 2.2 .2 centimeter. The answer is A. What is the unit of acceleration? Everyone knows this, but if you can't figure it out, velocity is meter per second or distance traveled per time. Acceleration is 
velocity over time this is meter per second divided by second again which gives you meter per second squared c I think a lot of chemistry students might appreciate this. A pendulum is swinging. Five students each measure the time it takes to swing through 10 complete swings. Three students measure the time as 17.2. Another student measures it as 16.9. And the fifth student measures it as 17 seconds. What is the average period of this pendulum? So the average is equal to the sum of all recordings divided by the number of recordings, right? That's how averages work. So how many of recordings, so you have five students doing five measurements. You gotta believe that it's going to be divided by five, right? You're positive with that, I'm sure. Three of those students are 17.2. Now I can add 17.2 plus 17.2 plus 17.3, but I value my time. So that's going to be 17.2 times three. It's the same thing. Plus 16.9 for one guy. And the fifth guy measures it at exactly 17. Now it's basic algebra from this point. My answer is coming out to be 17.1. C is the answer. What is the value of a vector quantity? I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is voltage. We don't. We haven't studied it. This is density. Density doesn't really have any direction, it's a directionless quantity because which direction will density occupy, you know? Speed, well, it could, be, could have been velocity, but they've also added the direction, so it's more velocity at this point, and that's your answer, straightforward. A scalar quantity has magnitude, but no direction. So magnitude and no direction, no direction. So C has both things correct. So our answer is C.